Well, I am so excited about today, and I say that every Sunday, um, but this one's different. I'm telling you, it's different. Now, my name's Clay, by the way, and I get the privilege of being the uh, campus pastor to lead this particular church. We've got a bunch of churches in the Atlanta area, and I'm excited about today because uh, we're going to get to talk about something that I think is really relevant, but also really helpful. And it's certainly very important. Uh, We're titling it, I Said This, You Heard That. Has that ever happened to you in your life? Um, I I was trying to think back about my own life of when the last time I could remember that happening. And there were uh, a number of examples, uh, professionally and also personally. But um, I'll share just a real quick one. Uh, My wife Um, it's amazing how marriage can work, right? Because you become very um, in tune with this statement. You heard what? That's not what I said. Well, that's what I heard. Um, So uh, first year of marriage, I was just blissfully and happily married. And my wife, her birthday was coming. And I like to celebrate everything. Um, particularly birthdays. I like to celebrate my own. I go large with my own birthday. Uh, I plan my own parties. Um, I, I want it to be awesome. You get it one day of the year. You know, you may as well go big. Uh, and not everyone's like that, as it turns out. I didn't know that. Uh, she tells me, she's, I'm like, hey, your birthday's coming up. I'm so excited about it. She's like, listen, I, I just want to play it low key for my birthday. I'm like, got it. I know what that means. <laughs> That means you want me to go big. So I planned a surprise party and invited all of our friends, all of our family. They all showed up at our house. I didn't tell her about it. She opens up the door. The balloons are released. Everybody screams. The confetti is launched. Surprise. And she didn't enjoy it. And she told me afterwards. She said, you remember when I said I wanted to play my birthday low key? I'm like, yeah, you're glad I didn't, right? She was like, no, listen to me. I don't want to go big for my birthday, all right? She's like, that includes surprise parties. Don't ever, 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 ever throw me another surprise party. And I was like, wow, okay, Um, got it. So I don't know where that happened for you or has happened for you, but it is a huge part of life, right? Because those miscommunications can actually cause problems. And so what I want to talk about for the next few minutes is this, how to avoid miscommunication. That's a double negative in a way, right? Because I'm trying to help us avoid something negative, which in a sense is actually a positive. Communication, as you know, is not just about what is said. Communication is also about what is what? Heard. That's exactly right. There are two parts of communicating. Communicating is about conveying information, passing on information one person to the other. We do that through words, right? But we do it way more than just words. We share ideas and concepts and emotions and thoughts and opinions. All of those are exchanged and the opportunity for miscommunication is real. It's common when the listener fails to understand what the communicator, what the, the, the other person is trying to say. I, I read recently that in the workplace that 90% of management problems can be summed up as miscommunication. 90% of marriage problems can be summed up as miscommunication. Most problems in families happen because of miscommunication. That bad relationship, that difficult relationship that you have probably has something to do with the way something was communicated or the way something was miscommunicated. Miscommunication has caused all kinds of problems in the world. Wars have been started. Companies have gone out of business. Families have stopped talking to each other. Marriages have broken up because of miscommunication. This is real. I don't need to tell you this. You know this. When, when, I, was, uh, when I was a kid, I grew up in this church where we did Bible drill. Did anybody do Bible drill as a kid? Um, Bible drill, if you didn't grow up in a church that did this, this, it sounds so bizarre, but the way it worked was we would stand in a line. We had these verses that we would memorize, and then we would stand in this line, and we would hold a Bible like this. Uh, someone would call out the reference, and you would open it up, and you would find it, and if you knew it, you would step forward. And then the person would call on you, and you would have to recite it out loud. Yes, it was as dope as it sounds. 
it was, I love competitions, and so I loved it, and I always wanted to win, and so I really did my best to memorize these verses, and some of them I'm really grateful that I did, and they've even stuck with me, and the one that we're going to look at today was one that I memorized when I was a kid. It's Ephesians 4.29. It's a verse that the Apostle Paul wrote. It's a statement that he wrote about communicating, about how to communicate well. This is what he said, Ephesians 4, 29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. When I was a kid, if you would have asked me, what was this verse? What is this verse about? I thought it was about not saying dirty words, not saying cuss words, not saying anything vulgar, not, not any kind of coarse joking it, it, that's what I thought it was about because that's what I thought unwholesome words were. But it's way more than that. It's way deeper than that. It's way more profound than that because it's not just about dirty words. No, it's about unwholesome words, which unwholesome words, in the very sense of the definition, any word that doesn't lead to someone becoming more whole. It's unwholesome. It breaks them down. It tears them down. And the second part of this verse informs us of that. Paul wrote, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. That our communication is meant to benefit the other person. And Paul's saying, any communication that you are giving to someone else, verbal or nonverbal, idea, word, thought, any of it, if it doesn't build the other person up according to their needs, then it's not going to benefit them. And it will eventually become an unwholesome word that will destroy. And we all have examples of that. So today, what I hope to do is, uh, through an interview that I'm going to uh, just set up, I'm hoping that all of us can do this, that we can learn to communicate in the other person's language in order for us to lead others well. I think there's an a enormous professional application to what we're going to talk about today, that in order for you to lead others well at your place of employment, we've got to learn how to communicate in their language according to their needs so that it will build others up, so that it will benefit those who listen. But also, we must learn to communicate in their language if we're going to love others well. I think there, there are so many personal applications of this, whether it's in a relationship, dating relationship, engagement, marriage, whether it's with your in-laws, whether it's with your kids, with your parents. If we're going to love others like God wants us to love others, We've got to learn how to communicate in their language. In order to talk about this, um, I, I, I wanted to use this day to introduce you to someone. Uh, this person's name is Kathleen Edelman. And Kathleen is a personal coach, but she's also a communication expert. And I have seen the evidence of Kathleen's work in so many friends, family members, volunteer teams at North Point, d different, different uh, staff teams. Her work is really tremendous, and she's been at it for about 30 years, and she really is an expert on communication. And on top of that, we have a, a new resource that we have been working with Kathleen on called I Said This, You Heard That. And my hope is that you would uh, listen to today and that you would be encouraged to go through this study in your small group, maybe at your place of employment, maybe with your family, or maybe even personally. But I think that resources that come out of things that have gone really well and helped people are great things. And so today I wanted to introduce you to Kathleen and to this new resource. So if you would, put your hands together, make a little bit of noise for the one and the only Kathleen Edelman. <laughs> Hey, Kathleen. Hey. Not, Not only do they clap, but you got some people that cheered as Yay. well. That is awesome. Thank so you are you among so friends. Thank you. Um, that Kathleen, makes me feel safe. We'll figure <laughs> out that later. That's right. Um, <laughs> Kathleen, you have been married to Brad yes. for 31 years. 31 years. Yeah. Uh, way to go. Hey, Brad. Yeah. Brad's got his phone out. Look <laughs> at you. What a loving husband. 
Um, your two kids uh, are yeah. Bryce and Avery. Yes. Hey, Bryce. What I love about Bryce and Avery, uh, well, they're wonderful people. But, yes, I agree. Um, Avery goes to the University of Georgia. That's correct. Bryce goes <laughs> to the Georgia Institute of Technology. That's right. So Polar opposites. <laughs> very different. Thanks, and they Bryce. have polar yeah. opposite temperaments. We'll find out. So very it's a lot different of polar temperaments opposites as well. in my house. Um, I wanted to start with this question yes. right here. Uh, why do the same words land differently for different people? Okay, so words are very powerful, but the real one answer to that is temperaments. Temperaments. Temperaments is why, because you hear and you speak out of your own temperament. So take the I illustration I started with. Yes. When my wife says, I want to go low key for my birthday. Yes, which I felt her pain <laughs> when you did the, yeah. right, yeah. You and my wife have yes. similar temperaments. Yes, we do. And so she doesn't want a surprise party. No, she did not. <laughs> <laughs> or she wanted a surprise party she knew about. Yeah. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Tell me about it beforehand. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that that learning yeah. learning what I've learned from you yeah. has been so helpful in so many areas of my life. Yeah. Um, but particularly in marriage, right. that is such a. It's just unfortunately an easy and difficult place to apply. It is because this. when you know when you're talking about temperaments, you're talking about you talk you spoke and your mm -hmm. wife heard. And, and then and, she and I, spoke, uh -huh. and you heard. And I was speaking in a language of my own temperament. And you speaking your language, and she's speaking hers. And there's all this gray yep. area. I was even and hearing her words through my own temperament. Through your own lens. Exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. So we want to know the temperament so that we can, again, love others better. And this right. is all rooted in Ephesians 4.29, which, Everything again, I do is Ephesians I've learned from you. Yep. So it's uh, communication, temperaments, all down the guidance of Ephesians 4.29. That, that we are communicating in such a way that is according to, to their need. To build others up according to their needs and then benefit all who listen. I love that. Right? So um, as we're diving into temperaments, yes. um, what, the first thing I want to talk about is something um, that I have also learned from you. That yes. It is different than personality. Yes. And this is where a lot of people get caught up. Mm -hmm. There is absolutely a difference between temperament and personality. Personality is a snapshot of mm -hmm. behavior or feelings or emotions mm -hmm. in a certain time. So it's the what. Uh -huh. And then temperament is the why behind the what. Uh -huh. It's the why behind the feelings or the why behind the emotion or the why behind the behavior. So it's two completely different things. That is very helpful to me. And what you're going to cite, uh, one of the simple, easy ways to explain this is mm -hmm. through this quadrant right here, exactly. through these terms, which mm -hmm. a lot of you have probably heard these terms. They have, and, and maybe, you know, the history of it is, is that these been around for thousands of years. Mm. This isn't something new. Hippocrates studied how people naturally responded in different situations, and they continuously fell into four different categories. Well, at that time, they thought it was humor of the body or, mm. blo or body fluid, uh -huh. right? But it was actually in, in you. your body, yeah. hence the names. These are all body fluid, okay. right? Um, but this is a mouthful. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. These, these can be a mouthful. So yeah. we've matched them with colors, and that's, that's where we've gone, especially with children. You know, if you've ever heard a child try to say a Greek name, you know, <laughs> like it can phlegmatic. get phlegmatic, you know, yeah, it gets a little, for a Mom, I'm phlegm, you know, <laughs> right, exactly, right. <laughs> right? So we matched them up to the colors. And, and it's so, to me, it's, it's one of the genius that uh, behind what you, your work is that you've made it so simple for yes. people. Because instead of having to learn those difficult terms, you can just understand these colors. And these yeah. colors match up so well oh. with, these pers with these temperament types. Oh, absolutely perfect. The sanguine yellow, the choleric red, the melancholic blue, and the phlegmatic green. And what we have to understand is, you know, people come in and, the, and they want to change their wife or they want to change their husband or fix their child. Mm -hmm. And they think it's very complex and really it can be very simplistic mm, if mm. we can just learn this foundationally. I love right? that. So one of, uh, one of our hopes over the next few minutes is that uh, not only would you begin to identify your own self and learn more about yourself, but also that you'd begin to learn more about those around you. Right. So um, I, I think 
I would imagine that that will be helpful for all of us to do. I know it certainly has been helpful for me. Yeah. So do you want to explain these a little bit? Well, these are quadrants that are put in effect. So the top two, the red and the yellow, are extroverts. And in communication, that means your thoughts and emotions go outward. Uh. These are people who have no filter. Mm -hmm. So they just want information mm -hmm. out, right? So they talk before they think. Why, why did people laugh at that? Because they know that they go, huh. You know, yeah. and then they're going, ooh, maybe I shouldn't have said mm -hmm. that, or they yeah. just needed to know, you know, so they can fit, they're starting to already identify yeah. with how they speak, yep. right? Yep. And let me guess, these bottom two are introverted. Yes, which this Quick is learner. me, and yep. this is you, yeah, exactly. so we're polar opposites, <laughs> right? Right. right. Um, so that's why you're an arm distance away, so, so <laughs> here you go. This is a processor. These people are introverts, which uh -huh. again means their thoughts and emotions go inward, yep. right? Which, this is a person that thinks before they talk, <laughs> right? And doesn't like being interrupted. Exactly. <laughs> 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 uh, I, one of the, the thing I love about your definition of extrovert introvert, yes. I think a lot of times we think extroverts, oh, those are people that like to be around other people, mm -hmm. and introverts are people that don't, which right. is not necessarily true. You, no. The way you say it, which I think is great, is your ideas are, are in, in a way I think about it, that your ideas are formed out here. Right. As an extrovert, um, I sit in meetings and I'll say loads of stuff that I don't know I even believe, you know, <laughs> because I'm just forming the ideas. That's the, whoa. Right. Whereas that's an introvert, the no filter, that's right. right. The introvert is gonna, they're not going to speak until the idea is fully baked. Exactly. And then they'll bring it out for Meanwhile, others to see. Meanwhile, I'm just looking at you like, yeah, what an idiot. Taking yeah. a note. <laughs> Taking a note. All right. <laughs> so that leads us to the next part, though. Yeah. The, the red and the blue are p task oriented people. Mm -hmm. These people will prefer a task over people, where the yellow and the green prefer people over tasks. Mm. So this is why it's really important that we understand the extrovert, introvert, people task because the phlegmatic is an introvert that likes to be around people. They would prefer an to be around people. An introvert that prefers to be around people. That prefers to be around people. Yeah. Just like the choleric. Yeah. An extrovert. Yeah. But it's task driven. The red. Mm -hmm. They the can red. be around people. Mm -hmm. But the peop they prefer the task over the people. In fact, sometimes the task the people become the task. Ah. Yeah, and that's what they have to watch out for. Which we have all worked with. <laughs> work, we've all worked with people like that, yeah. right? Yeah. They can get a lot done, but they, sometimes you feel like you're part of the. You're a part, you're a of, part the, of the getting it done. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so that's really important to know. Yep. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, Kathleen's going to give what I think are three simple keys that can help you and I choose the words that, we're, that, that we do decide to use. And I think, mm -hmm. I think by, obviously, we can't learn everything about this in the next few minutes, right. but I think you've made it so simple that I we can so. get a long way fast mm -hmm. in the next few minutes just by understanding these three things. Mm -hmm. So give us the first one. So the first one is your temperament determines the words that you speak. So in, again, in the guidance of Ephesians 4.29, we want to know what our words are. So the yellow speaks the language of, we each, have our, each temperament mm -hmm. has their own language, fun in people, mm -hmm. the, the red is power and control, the blue is perfection and order, and the green is calm and harmony. So these are the languages, the core motivators that are put out through the, in, and determine the words that you're going to use. That makes so much sense to me. And we've even, let me give you some examples. So for example, the yellow, they often speak with animated, yeah. fun I don't know why someone people. laughed at that. That was not meant to be funny. They were like, are, are you dunce? Like that's so, but it makes so much sense to me because I am very yellow yes, and I, I speak. <laughs> yeah. You're and a wiggler. I, everything wiggler. is wiggly. awesome. You're wiggly all the time. Yeah, wiggly. Very He's wiggly. <laughs> wiggly. The camera guys are like going, hmm. <laughs> where's Kathleen? Where's her part? Daniel. <laughs> Daniel's back there. There he is. Thumbs up. Thanks, Daniel. <laughs> so you speak. Yep. Words animated, that are fun, animated, fun, people-oriented. People yeah. right? I say things like, like that sounds awesome. Yeah. Who's going to be there? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I totally <laughs> forgot. Yeah. Those exactly. are things that I say <laughs> so often. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's like a soundtrack to my life. It is. <laughs> And there you go. And then the reds, yep. they often speak with bold, mm. confident, controlling words. Words so, like uh, 
I'll do it. Mm-hmm. Or hurry, hurry up. up. Yep. Yeah, Let, let's, let's go. go now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I th- Kathleen, I think about, when I think about uh, the words that the Reds use, I, do you remember the Saturday Night Live sketch that they used to do about the IT person yeah. that would show up at the person's desk when they had a problem and you remember what they would say? Move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Move. Move. Yeah. To the blue person, that's going, what did I do wrong? (laughs) That is very red. That's a very red thing to say. That's exactly right. So um, in the blue, they would speak, you know, words that look like detailed, judgmental, or Mm. thoughtful words. Mm. Okay, this is a deep person. Yeah. So they'll sound more like, you want to take a stab at it? Um, uh, No pressure. Is everything going to be safe when you go there? There you go. Um, Are you sure you can trust these yeah. people? Am I sure I can trust this guy? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not sure. Mm, not so sure. Yeah. 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 I, I, uh, I have a mom who is very blue, and so that was, that's what she always wanted to know, mm-hmm. is who's going to be there? Mm-hmm. Tell me more about it. I need more details <laughs> before I can say yes to that. Yeah. And now you understand. Now I understand. That she wasn't, she wasn't being a hovering mom. Or right. This is how her language actually spoke. Yeah. And, right? and, it, and it is a, it's a strength. hmm yeah. And that, that needs to, the more we can understand it, exactly. the more we can understand how to, how to leverage exactly. it for others' benefit. Exactly. And then the Greens, they would often, often speak the language of easygoing, unenthusiastic, mm. or patient words. This Things is like, um, <laughs> no big deal. No big deal. Everything's fine. Just chilling. Just whatever. Yeah. It's cool. It's okay with me. I think, about a, I think about two people going to dinner, and someone says, where do you want to eat? Wherever. Your choice. I'm good with whatever. Yeah. You're good. Well, what are you into? I don't know. I mean, I'm whatever Until you Until you say, well, let's go to Outback. Yeah, let's go to steak? Outback. Outback? No, I don't want that. We had it's steak like, yesterday. Weird, because Didn't when I asked you, that? you said mm-hmm. whatever. And so it's the good. red, it's good. The red <laughs> is probably like, would you make up your mind? Yes. The hair is like, hmm, Care I'm good. about your life. <laughs> exactly. Make one decision. Yeah, and yeah. the green is like, why are you yelling why? at me? Yeah, exactly. This is and so the blue's in the corner shivering, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to cook my HelloFresh now. You I'm a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> As a blue, you yeah. love HelloFresh? Oh, yeah, course. I would imagine. Yeah, so yeah. the ingredients right out there. Yeah. yeah. I like it if we could have a bunch of people over. All right, oh, we'll what? stop. <laughs> But this is why yeah. it's so important because if you, the more you can understand yourself, the more you can understand others, exactly. the love. better you can apply Ephesians 4.29. And so, love them better. So right. the first one was your temperament determines the words you use. use. Right. Number two. Is your temperament determines the words that you hear. Uh, and this is key. And, we, and, and even the words you need to hear? You need to hear them. This, uh, is, this is the core motivator of the temperaments. How, the, uh, key. How it, important is this? This is it. This if is we it. never went to another slide, this was it. If you take anything home today, take this home. Uh, because this is what separates temperament from personality, mm. is these core motivating needs wow. that you've been trying to fill since you consciously or subconsciously since you've been born. Wow. So every word and behavior is motivated through these core innate needs. Mm. So like the yellow, approval, acceptance, attention, and affection. Do those, do, uh, do you connect with those? I connect with all of those. Anyone yeah. in particular? Uh, I mean, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, is my boss going to like this day? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Approve you of yeah, you, right? Yeah, is my boss going <laughs> yeah. to approve? Sure. Exactly. And I try to tell myself, well, God approves, you know? Doesn't <laughs> matter. <laughs> Doesn't matter. No. Exactly. You still want the right. candy yeah. thumbs yeah. up, yeah. right? Right? Yeah. Um, the red, loyalty, sense of control, appreciation, and credit for work. So again, these are like food and water. Mm. So the choleric's looking like, hey, do they have my back? Mm. You know, are they going to, you know, really stand up for me, mm. right, as an example? For the blue, it's safety, sensitivity, support, space, and silence. Kind of like when you asked me when we were Getting practicing ready. if you could hug. Right. And I was like, mm, Yeah, I said, <laughs> yeah. I said, Kathleen, when you come on stage, because I was trying to think for, think for a, I was like, okay, yeah. details, let's yeah. walk through it. Yeah. I said, would you be okay if I gave you a hug when you came in? She said, a fist bump would be fine. Yeah. So. <laughs> My definition of space, right? <laughs> and that was nice. Yeah. Um, and then the green is harmony, worthiness, lack of stress, and respect. Mm. So these are crucial. We want to define these needs 
And that way, you want to define them so that you can love yourself better, mm. so that these words that we're talking, you can say them to you first, uh, yeah. and then you can learn the temperaments of the others. Now that I know you, I know these. Uh -huh. So there's no reason when our paths cross now that I can't love you better mm -hmm. by using words that fill these needs. Mm -hmm. So let's, can I throw a couple of questions out to you? Sure. Let's take, um, I mean, you, you know, parenting is on the front of my mind. Okay. Um, when I think about, we, we have a daughter who's red. Okay. Um, and she definitely has a sense of control. Mm -hmm. I've recognized that need mm -hmm. in her. So let's take, uh, you know, a common battle in our house would be who gets to decide what you're going to wear mm -hmm. to school. Right. So how, how would, play that out for, how do, how do I help a red in that case? Let her plan out her outfit. And not only for the day, but the week. In fact, make it a challenge. Hey, I challenge you, because you were so good at this, I challenge you for, to get an outfit for the whole week for school. Uh, and I believe in you, because uh, you are really good at that. In fact, maybe you can even show your younger brother how to do it. Come now on. you're, ooh, mic drop, right? Yeah. Now you're trying to, <laughs> right? Kathleen just dropped the mic yeah, in case yeah. you missed that. That was the, a mic because. Because there's a difference between control and yeah. sense of control. Uh -huh. And that's what she wants. She just wants to have a sense of control and then to see that you have her back. I right? love that. So let's take a green. Mm -hmm. Let's say, um, let's take a situation at work. Let's say somebody works with someone who's green. Okay. And the plans change. Mm -hmm. we, this is the way we were going to handle it, but now all of a sudden new data has come in and now we've got to change everything. How, does the, how do you speak to a green about change? First, you want to revisit where they were successful. And you want to say, hey, you were working on this. This was great. We mm. were almost at a finish line. But I know that your skill set could, we have a little change. I would love to hear your opinion uh. or your idea on how to get this, us through this change. Uh, okay. Because these people have great ideas uh -huh. and opinions, but they're quiet by nature. Uh. So if they're asked... They're, they definitely will have you know, so you, some way to get it finished. You're giving the green a voice. Exactly. You're saying, hey, your voice matters. It matters. Speak up. Yeah, and, and we really respect that. Yeah. And your value on the uh, team. Yeah. You, know, you want to show them that they're, they're, they're value. Like if they weren't there, they would be missed. Wow. So your voice is important. That's tremendous. Yeah. So the, the, again, the idea is not just to understand yourself. Right but to also understand the needs of the people close to you, the people that you exactly. work with in your family yep. so that you can build them up best. That's right. It's, it's just such an outline of the verse, is yeah. it not? Yeah, it really is. That's what's amazing <laughs> really about is. it. So the third big idea is this. Understanding the temperaments changes every conversation. And why do you say the temperaments? The temperaments because, again, you have to be so aware and accepting of yep. your temperament and know that when you speak on your tongue lays the power of life or death. Wow. So your, your, your words that you give life to are a choice. Yeah. So you have to understand it changes every single conversation. So I always ask people to initiate a pause. Mm. Think and just breathe for a second before you say a word. Then you want to give grace to understand that that person may be different than you, mm -hmm. literally wired using words and behavior that are different than you, and maybe, then celebrate that, yeah. right? Maybe more fidgety. Yeah, way you know? more fidgety. <laughs> way more fidgety. Almost like I had to take nausea. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, way more fidgety, right? Or talkative, yeah. or loud, mm. or quiet, or whatever it is. Yeah. But that is really accepting that person, right? Yeah. But then it also helps you become the very best version of you. Yep. Right? Which is you, where we want to function from. You just said three things. Yes. You said initiate the pause. Initiate the pause. I'm big on the pause. I love that. Yep. Give grace. Give grace. And then celebrate I love the that. difference. Yeah. Wow. Giving grace, uh, giving grace means that you're going to allow them to be them. Exactly. But also, uh, it doesn't mean that, and we'll talk about this a little bit later on, but it doesn't mean that just because they are red that they can control every situation, though, exactly. right? Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's, it's that understanding that your strengths are my weaknesses, and my strengths are your weaknesses. Yep. So it really puts us in a place of humility 
It puts us in a place of vulnerability yep. and transparency, really, yep. in yep. communication. Yep. So we really have to learn to listen, which we don't do well mm -hmm. in communication, listen to understand instead of listening to respond, yep. and then choosing those words that can celebrate not only you and your strengths, but the other person in theirs. You, you brought a case study for us. I did. Uh, I love this. This is one of my favorite things I've seen you share. Um, yes. It's about your kids. It is. So hope this, this is not a surprise. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> Bryce is like, Phew. Avery's like, ah, that's me. Okay, so this is Avery. She's my yellow. Bryce is also melancholy blue. And Bryce was studying abroad in Ireland um, at the University of Limerick. And he sent us a text. And the text said... Tour was awesome. Also talked to somebody from the UK. The whole time, it was really interesting. Just got on the bus back to Limerick safe and sound. Now, this must have been quite a tour because for a melancholy to put that in all caps, <laughs> that had to be a great tour. But he's back to Limerick safe and sound. This is Avery's response to that text. Yay! Which Yay! Can I stop? Yeah. She has already added more exclamation points than he in even the first <laughs> line than he added the whole text. Then they have a, right. And then listen, I'm so thrilled to hear, because this is what she heard, and that's so cool that you got to talk to somebody from the UK. It doesn't say anything about the awesome tour. <laughs> it talks about the person from the UK. And then it says, I'm glad you're back safe and had fun. I don't see that word up here, <laughs> do you? <laughs> emoji, emoji, right? <laughs> this is the temperaments, though. One minute later, we get this from Bryce. Oh, no, somebody sat next to me on the bus. The whole trip is ruined. <laughs> That's so great. Not part of the trip. No, the, the whole, whole thing trip is ruined. Was ruined. <laughs> because someone got in my space. That's exactly right. Love right? It. And started putting emojis. Uh, <laughs> so in, in light of this, it, is there a temperament that's better than other temperaments? Well, no, there isn't, really. All the temperaments are the same. There's no one that's better than the other. Because really we are here to, you know, celebrate each other's strengths. And yeah. again, your, your strengths are my weaknesses. So there is no temperament that is better than another. We want to just master our own yep. and be our own best authentic self yep. so that we can give. Yep. Because you cannot give what you don't have. So here's where we would want to put in self-talk. What are you saying to yourself? How are you building yourself up according to your needs so that when you cross the paths with somebody else, you can love them better? I, and I've, I've asked you this before, mm -hmm. but this is off script a little bit. Okay. Sometimes people, which I know is not, <laughs> you don't love that idea. I love it. I'm like, let's talk. Uh, speaking of that, Plan. what do you think about the Super Bowl? Let me buckle um, in. <laughs> Kathleen, what do you, sometimes people say, oh, I don't like that. I don't want you to label me. Yes. You know, don't, don't put a, don't put me in a box. Okay. I, you know, it's okay, a lot of times. Mr. Red. <laughs> right, right. That's who it would probably come from. Is so, it pushback from What do we label? say? What do you say This about is that? a guide. I mean, this is really a guide in communication. There's no way that we can step back and look at our children or our friends or the people at work and say that you do not see the different temperaments. Sure. In fact, even you sitting here today at some point of this, I'm sure you've connected at some point with one of the colors. So it's not necessarily putting somebody in a label as a descriptive word like, oh, you're funny, so you're yellow, or you're mm -hmm. a good leader, so you're red. All the temperaments can be funny. All the temperaments can be a good leader. You know, we just all want to function in our strengths mm -hmm. because that's where your calling and purpose sits. That's fantastic. Yeah. I, I want to revisit a couple things from this verse. So if okay. we could put this verse back up again. Um, there's a couple things that you pointed out yes. that I thought was, uh, would be a great landing place for us. Okay. So this, uh, this is my verse. If you happen to talk to my kids after, they grew up with this verse. This is our family verse. But the one word that I really is this word, let. Okay, that tells us that our words are a choice. Just mm -hmm. like we said earlier, on your tongue lays the power of life or death. So every word that comes out of your mouth mm -hmm. you is You let a it out. You yeah. let it out. 
or you yeah. keep it. You let it out or you keep yeah. it. So right there, we know all our communication is a series of choices. Wow. Right? Um, to put that in a simple way, every word that you use is a word that you choose. That's right. If, you're, if, you, if you used the word, you chose the word, mm -hmm. which I love. What, what I loved about that was that uh, it, a lot of times we say, oh, well, that's just me. Mm -hmm. And sorry, you got to deal with it. But I had to get that <laughs> off my chest. Or I had to say that. Yeah. Um, and that's just not necessarily true. No, that, no you chose those words. Mm -hmm. Now, your temperament might be, uh, might have um, pushed you toward that direction, maybe. Exactly. Would you say that? Most likely in your weakness. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean you didn't choose those words. Right, right. Exactly. Which leads to the, the next. To the next one, which is unwholesome. You know, any, too. It doesn't just say some. God said any unwholesome talk, mm. which again, unwholesome means detrimental physically, mentally, or to the well, moral well-being of somebody. Wow. I mean, just if we just stop for a minute and wow. think what he's asking us, yeah. I don't think anybody would want to do that to another person, let alone themselves, right? It, so raises, again, it raises the stakes. It raises the stakes. Are you speaking wholesome words to yourself? and then to others, wow. right? Just yeah. stop right there for yeah. a minute. And again, initiate that pause, right? Yeah. Um, so one of the things I've heard you say is this, um, that we're never to use your temperament as an excuse or as a weapon. That's exactly what, right. What do you mean by those two? Exactly what you just said earlier. We, we, we never use our temperament as an excuse. Hey, that's just how I am. Just get used to it. I'm not a quick mover. Do it yourself, <laughs> you, know, you know, right? We just don't do that. Yeah, you know, we in, yep. in any relationship, it's just not a helpful place to be, right? I love that because again, it goes back to the verse. It is our words are meant to be for the good of the other person. That's right. I mean, this is the heartbeat of what Jesus taught us mm -hmm. that we are to love our neighbor as ourself. That if I'm going to love my neighbor best, yes, I've got to use the words. I've got to understand my neighbor. Yes, and I've got to use the words that my neighbor needs. Yes, and. He says that because he says, you know, love your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Mm. He's saying, see you how I see you. Mm. I, I see that. you as a beautifully yellow, wiggly person. <laughs> 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 Once you accept that and love that, then love your neighbor. I love that. <laughs> uh, well, Kathleen, thank you so You're much. Thanks, Thanks for, for what having you do. Um, I really do hope that, um, I hope that you will grab a copy of this. I think it just released a yes. couple of days ago. Two days ago. Um, you can buy it anywhere where books are sold. That's right. Um, we've got copies available today. Uh, I really can't emphasize this enough, but if you are in a group, this is a great thing for your small group to go through. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a great thing for you to do with your family. The assessment is a part of the, the workbook as well, which I think is fantastic. So um, we're going to end with this video. It's great. Do you want to set up the video? I would love to. If any of this has spoken to you, if you've connected with any of the colors or you think you're just like maybe not sure, you, this, will, this will definitely land it for you. I love it. Yeah. Check this out. All right. Bye.